Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your many displays of love through tangible and intangible blessings too numerous to measure. We are truly better than blessed and we have so much to be thankful for. Bless the city of Norfolk, bless every citizen who resides within its boundaries, every city employee who works to make our city great. Father, bless our mayor, city manager, and this council as we labor together in the calling of public service. Give us the wisdom to govern fairly and ethically with equality, integrity, and compassion, and allow us to represent our city in a spirit of excellence. I pray that you will guide us through these difficult economic times and give us strength and wisdom, give us the strength and wisdom we need to make the decisions that face us. In your son's name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Burford? Here. Mr. Protegiru? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagol? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to um, excuse Dr. Wibley, please. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have you here. Uh, for your benefit, um, the process which we're going to follow tonight uh, for the council meeting is the first thing we're going to do is take up the public hearings, and we have a whole series of them uh, on the agenda. After the public hearings, we'll go straight to the consent agenda. Again, there are a number of items there where we may vote on all of those matters in one vote, and we're permitted to do that. Then we'll go to the regular agenda, and again, we have a number of items there. Got a pretty full docket. We'll vote on all of these matters in just the way they are numbered on the printed docket. At the conclusion of the formal agenda, that's everything that's on the printed docket. Uh, if anyone, if any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item, that's something that we're not voting on, you'll be given that opportunity. All you have to do is sign a slip of paper, which the clerk has made available in the rear of the council chambers before the meeting began. So, uh, and some of you have elected to do that. So there are no ceremonial matters. We'll move directly then to public hearing number one. Public hearing one scheduled for this day, pursuant to action of council on January 10, 2012, to hear comments on the conveyance of a gym lot to Claude Harris on property located at 2517 Bellevue Avenue. All right, Mr. Harris is here to answer any questions. Hello, Mr. Harris. Thank you for coming down. Any questions, comments, you can call the roll, please. We have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Claude Harris of certain parcels of property acquired by the City of Norfolk pursuant to Section 58.1-3970.1 of the Code of Virginia and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you for coming down here, Mr. Harris. Appreciate it. Public hearing two, please. Public hearing two scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on January 10, 2012. To hear comments on the conveyance of a gem lot to KAL Investment, LLC, on property located at 1647 Delavan Street. Um, Kenneth Lundy and Angela Lundy are here to answer questions, if anyone has any. Thank you all for coming down. I don't know that we, we don't have any questions. Thank you. You can oh, call the rule. Uh, just for the record, Mr. Uh, uh, Calloway, mm -hmm. he, he, wasn't un, he wasn't clear that this was a, a, a parcel that's adjacent to your uh, your home? Yes. Yeah, and he thought that this was a, a lot, yes. a right. full-size lot? Yeah, he can call. Okay. okay. So it's Thank not. You. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. So you go ahead. An ordinance authorizing the conveyance to KAL Investments, LLC, of a certain parcel of property acquired by the City of Norfolk as, uh, and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing three, please. Mr. President, the applicant has uh, expressed his desire to not go through with the matters the motion is to withdraw yes sir public hearing three please okay mr burfitt aye mr protegiru aye 
Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four. Public hearing four is scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on January 10, 2012 to hear comments on the conveyance of a gem lot to Levy Herald Enterprise 4 LLC on property located at 1013 Dunbar Street. All right. There's no members uh, of the public. No one is signed up to address the council on this matter. You can call the roll. Okay. An ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Levy Herald Enterprises 4 LLC of a certain parcel of property acquired by the City of Norfolk is a, and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? <coughs> Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing five. Public hearing five scheduled for the state pursuant to action of council on January 10, 2012 to hear comments on the conveyance of a gym lot. Lorana J. Williams on property located at 2317 Middle Avenue. And there's no one signed up to address the council on this issue. <coughs> Call the roll. An ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Lorana J. Williams of a certain parcel of property acquired by the city of Norfolk and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? I public hearing six. Public hearing six scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on January 10, 2012 to hear comments on the conveyance of a gym lot to Family Properties LLC on property located at 1236 Courtney Avenue. Again, call the roll, please. An ordinance authorizes the conveyance to Family Properties LLC of a certain parcel of property acquired by the City of Norfolk and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing seven. Public hearing seven scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on January 10, 2012 to hear comments on the conveyance of a gym lot to Chumnoen Mool on property located at 1541 Vine Street. Good for you. Mr. Mool is actually here to answer questions if anyone has any. All right. Well, thank you. Go ahead. Call the roll. An ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Tholmool and Chunnoemool of a certain parcel of property acquired by the City of Norfolk and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, public hearing eight, please. Public hearing eight, scheduled for this day, pursuant to action of council on January 10, 2012, to hear comments on the conveyance of a gym lot to LCA Biggs on property located at 742 Reservoir Avenue. All the roll. Okay. An ordinance authorizing the conveyance to LCA Biggs of a certain parcel of property acquired by the City of Norfolk and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, public hearing nine. Public hearing nine scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on January 10, 2012 to hear comments on the conveyance of a gem lot to Muhammad Ashraf on property located on the west side of Minnie Avenue. Call the roll. An ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Muhammad Ashraf of a certain parcel of property acquired by the city of Norfolk and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing 10. Public hearing 10 scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on January 10, 2012 to hear comments on the conveyance of a gem lot to Corporation of the Presiding Bishop of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on property located at 7845 Nancy Drive. I have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Corporation of the Presiding Bishop of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints of a certain parcel of property acquired by the city and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? I just um, want to ask if we, when we continue the gem lots, if it's possible on the packet that they could put the actual property that's being acquired. Or acquired. There's no maps the in there because right. when we get questions from constituents, they think that the city's selling some kind of property, and it would be nice to just tell them what it is and where it is if they want to look at it. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Uh, you know, on almost every occasion, we're putting it back on the tax rolls, too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things I had asked about some time ago to see if it was even feasible to look at uh, all of these, uh, these gym locks we're disposing of. Can we get a, uh, a total? from a revenue standpoint of what that means. And I would hope that Frank, Frank here, yeah, that, you know, as we dispose of these gym lots, that we are keeping track 
uh, of, of, you know, where they are to make sure that we're not repeating, uh, repeating our, um, <coughs> our the, repeating uh, how we uh, dispose of these lots in the, in the past because, you know, how we got here is that we were taking these lots and we were just basically selling them to folk and they were building substandard properties and fragile neighborhoods. So I would hope that as we dispose of these, these gym lots, we do have some in a lot of areas like Douglas Park or, you know, in uh, some of the more fragile communities that we purposely held these properties to, to, to try to uh, 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 build uh, somewhat of some synergy because we had blocks of them. So I would hope that we're not just disposing of these, you know, back in the hands to create the very thing we uh, created a gym lot program to get away from. So I would hope that we, we're continuing with those efforts. But I know every time we meet, we are disposing of gym properties. And so I hope we're really looking at that. Mr. Vice, Mr. Vice Mayor, yes, we are. We, uh, as you're aware, we have really two programs. There's a side lot disposition program, right. and then there's the uh, lots that are for development. The easiest way to discern the difference is those for development, we're actually selling. Right. Um, these parcels are odd-shaped. Um, some of them are not buildable lots, um, so they don't fall into the for development category. But we're also looking for ways to enhance the current program, particularly on the for development side. And for the development side, we're still going through the uh, design book, the book that you guys, uh, okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, can we finish voting? Yes, sir. Okay. 11. Public hearing 11, please. Public hearing 11 scheduled for this day pursuant to action of the council on January 10, 2012 to hear comments on purchase and sales agreement with the Salvation Army for city-owned property for the Norfolk Croc Center. It took us a while to get here, but we're here. And I see Mr. Brinkley is here. He's the chairman of the advisory committee for the, for the Army, for the Salvation Army, who's worked very closely with uh, the city for years now to get to this point. And you, you brought your attorney with you. I see Tony Thiel out there as well. I don't know if anyone has any questions, but unless the manager wants to make a statement, we can go ahead and vote on this piece. Let's vote. Let's vote. <laughs> okay. Is that all right? Okay. All right. Call the roll, please. I have an ordinance authorizing the purchase and sale agreement and the grant agreement with the Salvation Army for the development, construction, and operation of a croc center, which includes a natatorium authorizing the conveyance of parcels of real property to the Salvation Army appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of $2,700,000 as a grant for the natatorium. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burford? If I'm not mistaken, this is the last <coughs> action that will be taken by the I think the this guy, is it. This is it? <laughs> Aye. Thank you, Troy. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Yeah, and I, I actually believe, Troy, you may be the only person standing who was here, was here at the beginning from the, when we started this process because the, the leadership at the Salvation Army has changed a couple of times since we, you know, okay, well, so, so thank you for hanging in there with us. I vote aye. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll move to the consent agenda. There are, what have we got, eight items on the consent agenda. Would any member of the City Council like to have any one of these matters considered separately? Okay, uh, call the roll, please. Approved and consent agenda, Mr. Perfect. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1, please. R1 is an ordinance approving an agreement with Verizon Virginia, Inc. and the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Transportation for the relocation and adjustment of telecommunication facilities relative to the military highway project and authorizing the city manager to execute the agreement on behalf of the city. Dan Montague? <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, Mr. Manager. My name is Dan Montague. I live at <coughs> 5 Creek Street here in the city of Norfolk. I'm glad that you guys are talking to Verizon. And being as you got their attention, how about asking them to bring Fios to the city of Norfolk? Thank you. Okay? Okay. Hey, you know the thing about it is, everybody else has got it. How come we don't? Huh? We've asked. They don't want to do it, Dan. Well, talk to them. Asked. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. 
Mr. Burford. Aye. Mr. Protegero. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigo. I, I think that we actually should have a statement on our website on Best. Verizon because I think I get more requests for that. Best. And I've always <coughs> heard the same email that Stanley has sent me to everybody just explaining because I think people need to understand that it's not us. Right. And uh, I know that Verizon has been engaged in this and some of their employees tell uh, customers that it's our fault, but I think if they had the truth and they, we should put that on our website, why Norfolk does not have Fios, uh, that would cut back on a lot of questions that we get from constituents, but I. Ms. Williams? Aye. Ms. I agree with Tommy's statement. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. We are two. An ordinance approving an agreement with Dominion Virginia Power and the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Transportation for the relocation and adjustment of electrical distribution facilities relative to the military highway project and authorizing the city manager to execute the agreement on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3. An ordinance approving an agreement with Virginia Natural Gas and the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Transportation for the relocation and adjustment of gas distribution facilities relative to the military highway project and authorizing the city manager to execute the agreement on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4. An ordinance approving an agreement with Cox Communications and the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Transportation for relocation and adjustment of telecommunication facilities relative to the military highway project and authorizing the city manager to execute the agreement on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance approving the acceptance of the Norfolk Adult Drug Treatment Court Grant Award of $182,500 from the Supreme Court of Virginia for the Adult Drug Court Program and program fees up to $15,762 and appropriating the grant funds and program fees and authorizing the expenditure of $78,750 from previously appropriated funds as a local cash match. Dispense with the charter requirement for the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burford? Aye. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance amending and reordaining the fiscal year 2012 general compensation <laughs> plan to add two new class titles. <coughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. An ordinance to amend and reordain section 25-654 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to add 11 stop signs. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption on property located at 3027 East Virginia Beach Boulevard and 987 Valentine Boulevard by 5-1 vote planning commission recommends denial. All right, there are four ordinances uh, <coughs> that uh, the council is prepared to vote on tonight they, and they are set forth in R8, R8A, R8B, R8C and so the folks who have signed up to speak will consider <coughs> You just have to speak once and we'll take that into consideration. We have a number of folks who have signed up. Um, uh, what I'm going to ask is when I call your name, if you'll come to the podium, we'd like to, you to please identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name and your present home address. And then, tr and then we would like you to limit your remarks to three minutes, please. Okay. Um, Steve Romine. Good evening, uh, Mayor Frame, members of City Council, uh, City Manager. For the record, my name is Steve Romine, local attorney for 7-Eleven. I have with me tonight Armin Curion, Riaz Vazarelli, and Ed Davidson from the 7-Eleven Company. You can answer questions I might not be able to. As you indicated, there's four applications tonight before you, a special exception uh, for retail gas sales, special exception for 24 hours, adult use for ABC off-premises sales of alcohol, and a Broad Creek gateway overlay development. The staff report is fairly complete. I will not uh, be redundant. I won't go over that. All I want to stress tonight is the parcel is approximately three-quarters of an acre. It's currently a BP gas station. 
with 24-hour service. Let me say it again, it currently operates as a gas station with 24-hour service. This proposal tonight is a dramatic upgrade and an improvement to what is existing there already. It's zone Z2 in a corridor, and it's the Broad Creek Gateway overlay. Uh, and by special exception, you can approve of what we've asked for tonight. There's four or five reasons why we think this is a good application. First, the store essentially replaces the one that recently closed on East Princess Anne Road one block away due to the development of the Croc Center, which you just approved a few minutes ago. Steve. Yes, sir. But make the, 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 uh, the clar clarify that it's not the same owners and it's not the same store. I will do that. It is not the same owners, not the same store. We are working with Mr. Weaver, who's here tonight as well, and we're in a partnership with him essentially. So it's not identically the same store. Uh, the store will greatly enhance and improve this corner. I have brought some real quick photos here. Here's a before picture. It's a kiosk with a BP canopy. Some of you all may be familiar with that. It may be difficult to see from a distance. Uh, that's essentially what's there. Uh, what's proposed is a brand new uh, store, 3,000 square feet, brick, wrapped canopies, mansard roof, pedestrian-friendly access, heavily landscaped, a lot of bells and whistles, close to a $3 million investment. And another profile real quick, I know I have limited time, uh, just showing you how attractive the building is. Full transparent glass in the front, a tower uh, feature in the top with copper uh, features for the roof line. Uh, just a, a beautiful store and a nice upgrade uh, to what isn't a, which is not there now. So those are just essentially a few of the profiles. Here's a side profile, left and right side, same contrast, uh, architectural shingle roofs. Uh, again, here's a rear view um, of what we plan on the site as well. Um, Where that front door going to be? Oh, that's, no, come on. So we believe it's, a, it's an upgrade, a lot of uh, pedestrian-friendly features. Uh, thirdly, 7-Eleven uh, is a good corporate citizen. It significantly contributes to employment and the Norfolk tax base. We expect increased retail sales uh, that will enhance revenue at this site. Uh, fourth, we believe these improvements and the enhancement of this corner will greatly uh, increase the value in the corridor and will provide a catalyst to other development. In closing, uh, we ask that uh, you approve these tonight, and we stand by for questions. Thank you. Thank for your you. Time. Can you speak to what you that you will not be sell, selling single servants? Thank you for reminding me of that, Vice Mayor. It was one of my points I couldn't get to. We will limit the alcohol sales to no single serves, uh, which is what the city has been asking us to do at any new addition, a new site that we develop in, in the city. And I think that's been consistent across the city. So alcohol sales uh, will not include single serve Great. alcohol. Thank you. What, what about chilled wine versus warm wine? Um, my understanding, uh, Mr. Riddick, is that they will do what they do in the other stores. I believe there will be some chilling of the wines. I, I don't know if that will be all wines. I can ask Mr. Vazirali to come up. He's the operational manager. If you'd like to hear from him or if you, or if you want to wait to the end, we can call him up either way. I know part of their standard operating procedure is to have um, some chilled wine available for those that want to purchase it that way. Um, Riaz, you want to come up? Riaz is the brand new Norfolk uh, real estate manager. He's been in the market before, and he's just come back, and he actually manages all the stores in, in Norfolk. Right. Thank you. Riaz Vazirali. Good evening, Mayor and uh, Council members. Uh, my name is Riaz Vazirali. I reside at 908 Rio Grande Drive, Virginia Beach, Virginia. All right, we had a question. Mr. Riddick had a question. Yeah. Will the 7-Eleven uh, sell chilled wine or warm wine? And are you willing to profit selling warm wine? Uh, typically, sir, uh, in all our stores, per law, we normally do sell chill wine. Um, and um, given uh, the cooperation from everyone, I'm willing to discontinue the chill wine at this particular location and just deal with the warm wine displays. Thank you. Thank you. No, 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 not, this is for I us. I hope that's responsive. That was, that was an exception to their normal operating. I wasn't okay. authorized to tell you that. Right. So. Right. Um, Mr. Turney, you want to make that correction? Uh, I will uh, add that okay. the wine uh, um, uh, won't be chilled. Yes, added. All right, thank you. Thank you. Right. Aaron Kennedy. <coughs> His name is uh, Aaron Kennedy. I've been in Middletown Arch for 22 years, and uh, I'm opposed of the 7-Eleven, but it seems like... And your ad I know your, your address is on 2801 Colchester Crescent. Thank you. Uh, it seems like city council's already 
made their mind up, but I think we need a compromise here that uh, might satisfy some of the neighborhood. Don't sell alcohol at all. We already don't sell alcohol there now. They already, they asked them to sell alcohol there. We have uh, four or five uh, establishments and walking distance that sells alcohol right now. So uh, I'd like you to please look into that if you vote for the 7-Eleven to keep it alcohol free. Because most alcohol is consumed when people are leaving before they even get home. As uh, Mr. Riddick said about the chill wine. And uh, I think we need to really look into that, the alcohol sales, right. suspending it Thank if you. we uh, vote on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ed Davidson. Good evening. Uh, I'm Ed Davidson. I live at 8067 Horseshoe Bay Court in Gainesville, Virginia. I'm the senior real estate rep for this part of, of the state of Virginia. Do you have any, anything you wanted to add to what's been said? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Lemuel Watts. My name is Elimio Watts, 2739 Cold Chester Crescent, Middletown Arch. I am against the 7-Eleven. I was on the website of the city today and I came across this uh, announcement for the St. Paul's plan in which uh, citizens were invited to come out and uh, express their ideas to be incorporated into the development of that part of the city. We went through that same thing with Broad Creek. and. Uh, Ours ended up with the Broad Creek Revitalization Plan. And I noted that the, in the planning department's analysis of the uh, proposal for the 7-Eleven, they mentioned this as being, uh, it being conducive to the uh, revitalization plan. I went into the revitalization plan to find out where it was. And, uh, I will read a certain part where this neighborhood, where this part of this, the plan comes up. The intersection of uh, Virginia Beach Boulevard and Valentine was to be called Market Square. And the revitalization plan says that at Market Square, residents will find a neighborhood-oriented retail with a combination of shops and services, such as locally owned bakeries, restaurants, outdoor cafes, florists, and cleaners. However, national chains such as Starbucks may also be attracted to this market. It, it would also serve as an appealing public gathering place for residents in the community. Described as a neighborhood convenience center by WRT, Wallace, Roberts, and Todd, who were the planners, this neighborhood amenity would be located at the Virginia Beach Valentine Boulevard and would be anchored by a full service grocery store and a medical office building. Now, this is what we left thinking that we were going to get. I see in the approval by the planning department, they mentioned the convenience part, but they didn't go into the whole definition of what the planners meant by this convenience uh, center. So I am against it, and I would rather that the city, instead of uh, approving this for a 7-Eleven right now, that we wait until we consolidate more of the properties and have something that's at least consistent with what is across the street, the large piece of artwork that turns colors at night, so that uh, will make the, be a better gateway into the community. Thank you. Uh, Brad Law. Hello, Mayor Fram and council people and city manager. My name is Brad Law. I live at 2963 Beachmont Avenue, and I am for the development of the 7-Eleven. Um, I've listened to some of the things that were said here tonight, and what would really be nice is if all the various civic leagues had talked to each other, um, along with the Broad Creek Homeowners Association, but that didn't happen. 
Um, the Broad Creek Civic League, which I think is against the uh, development of the 7-Eleven, does not represent the Broad Creek Homeowners Association. The Broad Creek Homeowners Association, our neighborhood is adjacent, is the only one really adjacent to the proposed 7-Eleven. And the 7-Eleven serves, along with the uh, artwork across the street, serves as a gateway to the neighborhood, along with the Croc Center that was recently voted on. The design of the 7-Eleven is contemporary and blends in well with the park across the street and the artwork. And I think it goes along very well with what's being, what was initially proposed for that area. It brings jobs to the area with the other 7-Eleven which left, those jobs left with it. Uh, this will bring new jobs to the area, which is a good thing. And, um, you know, I just, I just would like to see this 7-Eleven come into fruition and so that the people would be able to take advantage of it. And I, I'm glad that, I don't drink, but I'm glad that the, uh, uh, there would be no singles served there, and I'm glad that they're serving warm alcohol, I mean warm uh, wine, if, if that's allowed, because that will keep people from wanting to come in there and drink it before they leave the place. Thank you. Thank you. John James. Just for the record, Paul, um, Mr. Law's wife sent me an email, Harriet, and she asked that her support for the project be noted for the record. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Good evening, Mayor Frame. Good evening. Council <laughs> members, my name is John James. I live 3025 North Lake Bridge Drive. I'm the current president of Stonebridge Crossing, Civic League. Uh, I'm not going to go into this long because everybody knows our position. But I would last ask that all of our supporters stand up from the various civic leagues. Thank you for coming down. Appreciate you being here. Uh, all that I'm going to ask is, because like I said, I'm not going to make this long. We've been all yelling and shouting. Is a no vote. I, I mean, we appreciate the, the you know, the hot, uh, the the warm wine, cold wine, and, and the other things. But we just feel like. Uh, Something else should be on that corner. Thank you. We ask for your support in that. Thank you. Uh, Roger Pope. My name is Roger Pope, Land Design Development. We're the consultants on the project, and I'm just here to answer questions about any uh, elements of the layout or building or so forth. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Project. Okay. Mr. Cuthrell Brockington. Good evening, Councilman. I'm the, uh, my name is Cuthrell Brockington, 2717 Colchester Crescent, and I'm the Civic League President for Middletown Arch. And I would like to present to the City Council we have uh, 94 signatures of our residents that oppose 7 Eleven that they are strictly uh, are against 7-Eleven, and we understand the architectural aspect of it, and it's a beautiful building, but it still brings the elements that we don't want in our neighborhood, and we want our neighborhood to be family-oriented, and we want to have something to enhance. So the original plan that they had in regards to the uh, supermarket, as well as those other type of things, would be more conducive to our neighborhood, and we, cannot understand the planning commission agreed to not have a 7-Eleven and we cannot understand why the city council now wants to reopen this and say that they we must have a 7-Eleven in our neighborhood so we feel that the city council should support the neighbors the citizens of Norfolk thank you very much and here the uh, thank you thank you very much can I ask a quick you, question sir. this is the second time I've heard mention of a plan for a uh, grocery store and just like in other parts of the city that have new developments, a lot of those are concepts. Um, it doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. But I, my question is, is this 7-Eleven and that it seems like it's an out parcel, is this going to prevent the future of a, a grocery store from going behind it? No. Um, on that property? No. I, I don't know if no, Tommy. Acres. Tommy, all 17 acres were laid out. This was a part of the original plan. If you look at 
the the the, the uh, architectural renderings that were done uh, eight years ago. That site was still there. The gas station was still there. If you go to Port Warwick and we model it right after, after Port Warwick, right beside the 7-Eleven is the entrance where there would be a bank. There's also a fountain. There's also a grocery store. There's also a medical tower. And some of the civic lead uh, uh, organizations have seen that. They've even weighed in about the hotel that was proposed there and said that they, uh, they didn't like the hotel. You know, and I said that was the, th that part could be moved, but they were shopped. So the plan has not changed. This is the plan that we've been working on for the last eight years. And it does not, it does not hurt. That site is there, and all of those sites are strategically laid out. So it does not hurt the site at all. That is what's supposed to be there according to the plan and according to the market study. May I comment on that? As, in regards to the civic leagues, we were not involved. And uh, we, I had requested from you, Mr. Buford, about the 7-Eleven. And after the dedication of the Croc Center, I came outside along with my secretary, and I asked you about the 7-Eleven. And you informed me and my secretary that you were going to meet with the Civic League presidents in regards to the 7-Eleven, which you never did. You I'm never not, did meet with us. I'm not going to get into a verbal joke. But I'm just going by reality. But I, I met with verbal. all of Thank the you. Civic League. Okay. And you weren't the president when I met, met with Sir, the Civic I League. Talk to you. Okay. Right. okay. Thank you. Okay. Alfonso Albert. Question for you. Hey, oh. asked that question for you. Good evening, Mayor Frame, Council, Mr. Manager. My name is Alfonso Albert. I reside at 1017 Godfrey Avenue uh, in the great city of Norfolk, Virginia. And uh, I'm also president of the Broad Creek Homeowners Association. And I'm here to express my support for this project, as is the Broad Creek Homeowners Association. I'm joined by some of our other members this evening. And I would just add to that, uh, when my wife and I decided to uh, build a home in Broad Creek a little more than three years ago, uh, we felt we were buying into a vision for that community. And uh, we think that this is consistent with that vision. We wanted to be a part of it. We feel this project is economically viable uh, as demonstrated from the gentleman that just spoke. It's also attempting to be socially conscious and environmentally conscious. And uh, we support the project wholeheartedly, and we'd like to see it go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Marion Teasley. Honorable Mayor, Councilperson, City Manager, my name is Marion J. Teasley, and I live at 2731 Colchester Crescent in Middletown Arch. Last year, we had two members of the city council to speak to our civic league. One suggested that we support the 7-Eleven, and the other suggested that we not support the 7-Eleven. After that, those two meetings, we were promised that we would have a meeting with the civic leagues in our community to discuss the plans for the 7-Eleven. We are still waiting for that meeting. We met with the Planning Commission in November. They heard the concerns of the residents of Middletown Arch, and they voted no on the 7-Eleven. So now I need your help. How many meetings were held with the members of the Broad Creek community? When were they held? <coughs> you have a roster of the members that were present. Help me to understand your process. The petition that we submitted tonight was raised in two days. Councilman Wim Williams, our next meeting is Thursday, February 16th, 2012, and we would like for you to come and explain the process to us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Munir Suleiman. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor. City Manager, my name is Munir Suleiman. I live in 1025 Godfrey Street, Norfolk. Well, I've heard every speaker has spoken regarding to the 7-Eleven. I'm in full support of the 7-Eleven. 
ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand certain things in life. No structure is built overnight. No development is made overnight. Rome is not built overnight. This is a process that has been laid out why I bought into that neighborhood. But I know it's gonna take some time. And the process of building a 7-Eleven with that structure, with that elevation structure, with that architectural structure, and what would have as a gateway to that neighborhood is something that every one of us in that neighborhood can buy into and we can get along better to see a development in that area. I fully support the process. This is a change that has to come. Gradually, it should exist. In reference to uh, you know, the comments some other people have made as regard to maybe uh, liquor, I have never drank in my life, and I don't intend to drink. So it's a choice that we have to deal with. But I believe we can all get along on this matter to make sure the coexistence of development of that neighborhood, it entails everywhere, include North Forest State University, include any other neighborhoods, with the light rail, whoever thought 20 years ago or 30 years ago there will be a light rail in Norfolk. Here it goes. Those are the changes that we have to live with. Everyone was sitting right here in this room. 30 years from now, nobody will be here. 30 years from now, you'll be next set of generations will be here. So we need to learn to live together and then understand each other better. A village is not built in a day. Thank you. Thank you. John Stratton, Mr. Stratton. I that I'll still be here in 30 years. I'll only be 63. Hello, I'm John Stratton. I live at 937 Limestone Arch. Um, I thought I was just coming to give my opposition to the 7-Eleven. Uh, <coughs> I'd just like to say that I'm from Philadelphia. I've been here for seven years. And I was told that maybe 15, 20 years ago, that downtown Norfolk was like a ghost town, <laughs> kind of dead down there. And a decision was made to, to build the MacArthur Center and to have certain stores put there. And I think that it may be true that once that was done, that decision was made, it revitalized the entire city and it influenced the surrounding cities to make changes. Um, I'm not opposed to liquor being sold. I'm not opposed to 24-hour service or anything on that corner. But when you think of 7-Eleven, at least where I'm from, I'm from Philadelphia, and even in the outlying areas of Stonebridge, the 7-Elevens around, there is a certain element that you can count on at a 7-Eleven. And one of the problems that I have is, is that with the economy the way that it is, you know, a lot of us are upside down, property values are dipping. We need to have things in the community that are, going up, that are going to upgrade the community, that are going to attract other businesses. I can't say for certain that 7-Eleven won't do that, but from my experience with 7-Eleven, it's, it's, it, it's not certain. I can see other businesses there that would help, um, maybe uh, a CVS or some other type of business where we don't have to drive two miles, three miles to get prescriptions or to get other things. Now, um, when, we moved, when I moved here, I was under the impression that this community was going to be like what they've done in Ghent in the five years or seven years that I've been here. Um, but what I'm getting is an upgraded ghetto. Um, and, 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 and again, I'm not from, from Norfolk, and I'm, I don't know all of the little, the little political processes, but I know how much I pay in my mortgage. And I know how much I pay in taxes. And I know what I'm looking forward to the community being, with the light rail stop being there. And I think that we should rethink this. Um, I'm not opposed to anybody making money and having business there. But I think that um, it's important that we look at the future and, and attracting more businesses in the same manner that, that, uh, that uh, the gentleman who was talking about the, uh, the plan that was originally I uh, proposed eight years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Montague. Uh, <clears throat> Hello again. My name is Dan Montague. I live at 4605 Crick Street here in the city of Norfolk. I'm not 
opposed to 7-Eleven or the alcohol, anything else. Because simple reason is, if you see something you don't like, pick, take out one of these things and call the police, okay? You know, that's how simple it is. We don't. I have a 7-Eleven in my neighborhood. I don't have any problems with it. I got a mini mart in my neighborhood. I don't have any problems with it. But the main thing is, though, I want somebody to check out you know, being this is an old gas station, I want somebody to check out the tanks, the gasoline tanks, for the simple reason is you got dummies standing out there being cool and flipping cigarettes all over the place, and I don't want anything to blow up. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Felicia Drummond. Good evening, Mayor, Good evening. City Manager and Council Members. Um, I first want to share with you, my name is Felicia Drummond, and unlike the gentleman in the back, I'm a lifelong member of Norfolk. Um, just want to share some history so when I get to the point where I oppose the 7-Eleven, you understand I've been through this with Norfolk. I was born here. Um, I'm the granddaughter of Ashby Beckett. I am the first cousin of Leola Pearl Beckett Fox. And for those of you who know your Norfolk history, you'll realize that my family is the family that sued Norfolk Public Schools for integration. We lived at 830 South Hampton. We, my family had to go past white schools in order to get to the black schools. Um, Arthur Ashe was the attorney. He worked with Joe Jordan. So I want you to understand, I understand progress. Um, when we're here and we're talking about a 7-Eleven, when you look at the data, when you look at diabetes, when you look at hypertension, and you look at the room, and you see the population, the population that you're talking about is disproportionately dying. So you're going to put a 7-Eleven in a neighborhood where we've got to go three miles to get a prescription. You're going to put a 7-Eleven in a neighborhood where you've got seniors who can't access healthy living. I've worked critical care for 27 years. I've been in nursing for 27 years. I've worked critical care. I've worked labor and delivery. I've worked public health. I've worked school health. And the common denominator for a healthy lifestyle is healthy living. When, you, when the man was talking and I wanted to ask the question, he's going to make some uh, exceptions at 7-Eleven. Are you going to have fresh fruits and vegetables? Are you going to be able to go in and choose a healthy snack for a senior citizen? You put a 7-Eleven in our neighborhood and you put crack. It won't kill you today. It won't kill you tomorrow. But you go back enough and you'll be dead. Most of the men in here, your life expectancy is... 10% less than the white panel part that you're sitting behind. You're talking about economics. Let's talk about healthy communities. Let's talk about healthy neighborhoods. You're going to talk about health care costs. Health care costs began with you having a healthy diet. This is not the time when we have to eat chitlins because somebody threw it out. This is not the time when we have to choose pig feet. This is the time when we can choose lean meats because the data demonstrates that if we have a healthy diet, that we have a longer expert, that we have a longer time to live. We want to see our grandchildren. I want to see my great grandchildren. I have a grandson. He's two. He's rambunctious. But in order to get his prescription filled when he was sick, I had to go three miles. We're talking about a neighborhood. He said seven years ago, I bought into Middletown Arch 22 years ago, and there was a concept. The concept was that it was going to be a neighborhood and that we were going to have Middletown Arch 1, Middletown Arch Section 2, and Middletown Arch Section 3. When we got to 3, it became Stone Bridge Crossing. So what I submit to you is we don't need crack or 7-Eleven in the neighborhood. We need access so that we can have lean meats, fresh fruits and vegetables, and live a healthy lifestyle. Take the 7-Eleven to East Beach if you like the way it looks. We have plenty. Um, Mamie Johnson. We have plenty. Looking at me. Mamie Johnson. Mr. Tommy Smeagol. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Mr. Tommy Smeagol is also cute. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Mamie Johnson. I reside at 2605 Mapleton Avenue. There are some things I need to discuss with you this afternoon. First of all, as far as the Homeowners Association in Broad Creek, under the leadership of, of their president, we have partnered on several occasions to make our community a better place. So I need to make clarity with that. And it is my honor to have worked with Alfonso 
in partnering on the projects in the community of Broad Creek. I'm here tonight to discuss facts concerning the proposed partnership between BP Gas and 7-Eleven. To begin with, the Civic League, it took the Civic League months, literally months to make this decision. And it was the membership who made the decision. I am only the leader of the Broad Creek Civic League. It is the people, some of the people in Broad Creek who decided that they did not want the 7-Eleven. The community followed protocol and procedures. The Civic League called both of the representatives who represent us, Vice Mayor Burford and Mr. Paul Riddick. The Civic League also in June <coughs> decided to hold a joint meeting and we invited our Civic, our Civic League representatives. We also invited Mr. Riddick and Vice Mayor. At that meeting, there were many questions that we had. We were concerned about the Broad Creek Station, whether or not what was initially proposed in there would stay. Would it change things if the 7-Eleven came? We just did not know because we had not updated the information in a while. And so that's all we wanted to know. We just wanted information. In November, we went to the Planning Commission. There was a vote. But I want you to understand tonight, I think that where the problem lies is that all parties did not have the accurate information to make the decision. The Civic League voted on the 7-Eleven proposal based on the information that we had. I think the City Planning Commission also voted on the plan based on the information that it had. But recently, in the latter part of last week, I found out these things. Number one, I now know that BP owns the land where the gas station is. The city does not own it. I also learned that all the information was not provided to the City Planning Commission, the Civic Leagues, and 7-Eleven prior to our decision. I also can say as the leader of the Broad Creek Civic League, based on the information, and I say thank you, Mr. Smeagle, for calling me back because I already had my checklist to go down the list for all the city council members. Ms. Riddick, thank you for coming to the meeting. And Ms. Angela Williams, thank you for taking the time to spend an hour on the phone with me to answer all of my questions. And I hope that we can honestly do a better job with communicating between the city council, between the people of the city of Norfolk and the neighborhoods. I think that the city of Norfolk, we do have a great vision, but we have to be mindful of what the residents want. So again, I say to you, as a leader of the Broad Creek Civic League, I can now go back to my membership and tell them the true facts of what should have been presented in the decision-making process dealing with the Planning Commission, the city of Norfolk, and for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Hawkins, Philip Hawkins, has signed up as an opponent, but he does not wish to speak. Okay, that concludes the list of folks who have signed up to address the council on this matter. Are we ready to vote? Are we voting on each one of them separately? Yes, yes, going to vote on each one of them separately. All right, call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt on R8. Mr. Burfitt. Before I uh, <coughs> vote, I'm going to take a few minutes to, uh, there was some folk that had uh, alluded to, uh, I think the young lady um, alluded to the process. And uh, when did this process start? This process started when we started to, to develop the Broad Creek community. Uh, this, we, we basically, Norfolk Redevelopment Housing Authority and the Planning Commission, we were working on these, these issues simultaneously. That time we had great dialogue with the Broad Creek uh, Civic League. 
before uh, jo uh, Ms. Johnny Branch died, one of the things that we had talked about is a grocery store and the types of amenities that she wanted to see in that community. She said she didn't want to see stores like Spard Market uh, in that community. So we start aggressively planning, uh, trying to figure out how we can make this happen uh, in real time, not 30 years, but in real time as we develop this community. And so as we would take chunks out of uh, 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 building this community, from going to uh, a public housing community to a mixed-use community, uh, mixed income, uh, mixed-use community, uh, lifting all of the uh, real estate values of the communities around it. We also, at that point, we put in a TIF, a tax increment uh, district. Uh, and we did that purposely so as we built out that community, we would have the, we would have the, the necessary resources to continue to tear down the blight in that community and to continue to build the commercial and retail efforts within that community. We shared those plans with everybody who came and tried to, who was looking to move in that community. We had those plans on display during Homerama. We shared those plans with the Broad Creek community early on. They knew about Broad Creek Station. Middletown Arch and Stonebridge might not have because the boundaries, that's Ward 4. I don't represent Ward 4, but I do represent the entire city. And so when we, began, when we began that planning, even Channel 10 had put Broad Creek Station on TV. They talked about that when they were developing the light rail station. And so there, there, there have been uh, communication as it relates to that. When this 7-Eleven came about, the, the, the individuals from 7-Eleven had came into Mr. Duke's office, and I told them it is not going to happen. And I said that, you know, I, I, and before we, it was on the uh, docket, we took it off the docket. I went to Middletown Arch Civic League. I spoke with their uh, uh, Civic League at Second Calvary Church, the folk that were there. Gave them uh, 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 the whole plan on uh, Broad Creek Station. I met with Stonebridge Civic League. I brought the drawings. They saw the whole Broad Creek Station as well. Uh, they said what they didn't like. They voiced their opinion on it as it relates to uh, single, ser single servings, lottering, and those types of things. At that point, we came, met with the Broad Creek uh, Homeowners Association, met with the church, met with the Broad Creek Rental Association, did not meet with Broad Creek Civic League, one, because I, that we had, I thought they were already on board, and two, uh, when I was running uh, in tw t 2010 during the re-election, I couldn't get in there. So if I couldn't get in there then, I won't want to try to get in there uh, at, that, at this juncture. After taking all those concerns back to the 7-Eleven folk, uh, they were amenable to proffering those things. We never made it to the steps that we normally take within the community when we get the approval in terms of whether or not they are amenable to proffering these things. Then that's when you go back to the community and say, look, they're willing to profit them. But we never got to that point because between those times, the civic leaders had gone down to the planning commission and told the uh, Planning Commission that they were adamantly against it and they did not want to meet with the uh, developers as it relates to the 7-Elevens. And so, but normally the process is, and this has been the process in that whole area, whether it's been the villas, whether it's been the public art, whether it's been the croc center, whether it's been the library, whether it's been the school, okay? Everything that we've done in that community has been open and has been a public process. And we make sure that we get that information out so people can come out, vet it, force, uh, 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 we listen to their opinions as it relates to their input. And so we've done that. It's unfortunate in this particular instance that some people didn't get the information, but this plan has been out there for eight or nine years. That's my two cents. Yeah, vote. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Well, can I say something briefly? Sure, sure. I do understand what you said. First of all, I'm Andy Protegiru. I'm not Tommy. He represents East Beach, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm a lot handsomer than he is. Uh, I'm younger, though. Besides, younger. besides the fact, I think that um, 
I'm going to just say a couple things. I do agree with what you've said about about the uh, the food that is normally there, and I do believe that um, and when you go to other establishments, and I'll say I'll give you an example of Wawa. Wawa does have a healthy eating counter, and uh, I do believe that you have spoken to the individuals who own and will run that store, and I hope that they heed uh, what you have said. And the gentleman is shaking his head, and he may want to. Uh, you don't want to open a business, a place where people are not going to want you. And I think that he will heed what you've said about that and perhaps look at a Wawa model. Uh, this is a large store. It's, I think it's 3,000 square feet, if I remember. So he can put uh, more than just the normal. I know there's a healthy eating section at 7-Eleven. It's usually the sandwiches and the hard-boiled eggs and the bananas and that. They can do better. And I think that they've heard you on that. I will say this on behalf of my colleague. Uh, there was, a, and I want to say about a year ago, there was a drawing that was brought. I didn't know anything about this 7-Eleven. It wasn't on the radar screen of all the council because I think it was still being dealt with by the vice mayor. And there was a picture was brought to him on how it was to look or sit on the property. And, uh, and he, he objected. Nobody was there. It was, I just happened to be standing there. And he objected vehemently to how it looked. And, he, and I heard him say to nobody in particular, this is not going to happen because of his dissatisfaction with how it looked or sat on the property. Um, I believe that the message has been heard uh, from all sides. Uh, however, I do believe that, and also I think the message has been heard, if we can get development, is, if Chuck is here or someone from his office is here, uh, the idea of a Walgreens, a Rite Aid, Perhaps we can be more proactive as a city in that and try to find that as it would work or lure them in to get a prescription drug facility in there or close to the neighborhoods that are in question would help. That's what, that's what development can do or does, and perhaps we can get them to be involved in that. So, if, Marcus, if you can communicate that to him, uh, that I think will alleviate that issue, uh, and we should as a city do that. Uh, on behalf of, uh, on the issue of the vote, however, I will vote aye. Mr. Riddick? I was probably uh, the lead person against the 7-Eleven initially uh, because of the impact the 7-Elevens have in African-American community. Prime example of that is the 7-Eleven at the corner of Park Avenue in Brambleton uh, across from Norfolk State University. Things happen at 7-Elevens in the African-American community that don't happen anywhere else uh, in, in the city with 7-Elevens. Laudering, panhandling, uh, just things that have impacted our communities in a very negative manner. This vote is going to be a very difficult vote, and it'll probably be, it will probably rival a vote that I had to make several years ago when Covenant Presbyterian Church wanted to purchase the home of Thomas W. Young, the late publisher of the Journal and Guide uh, at Covenant and um, Corporate Avenue for the expansion of the church. The community uh, was totally against it. And in most instances, Norfolk had never done anything like that before. But because Covenant Presbyterian had been such a friend to Norfolk State, back during his embryonic days and allowed them to have uh, classes at the uh, church, uh, I supported that. It's uh, difficult for me to vote um, for this for, for several reasons, uh, because of the <laughs> residents who are opposed to it, uh, two of whom uh, happen to be John James, who I've been knowing since I was probably seven, uh, Kutha Brockington and I, uh, we're in the same homeroom class beginning in the 10th grade over at Booker T. And these fellows have been my friends over the years. After I saw the rendering of this particular 7-Eleven, I realized that, um, that, that uh, I guess Mr. Burford had gone to great lengths to bring uh, a product to the community that was unlike any 7-Eleven that uh, we have. 
The closest 7-Eleven that I've seen in terms of rendering but not in size is a 7-Eleven at uh, Hampton Boulevard between 26th and 27th Street. Uh, there are not going to be any single sales there. Uh, they uh, profit not to sell any uh, cold wine there. And <clears throat> I'm just, um, and, th and then I look at the uh, BP station as there already, and it's not really the most attractive uh, piece of property, and it's still there, and it could stay there forever. And, um, you know, it's, it's just very, very, very difficult for me to go uh and, and you know what I could do? Since I know it's going to pass, one of the oldest tricks in this game, <laughs> I'm seriously, one of the oldest tricks in this game is since you know it's going to pass, to vote against it. Now, if I voted against it, I'd be a hypocrite. Oh, and, and, it, and it might satisfy a lot of the people in the audience and, and say, well, you know, Riddick was with us, but it's a good product. And, 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 and when I sit here, I never have been and never will be a hypocrite. And I started to call the name of the two council people who were perfectionists at that particular angle, but I'm not. They, they don't sit here anymore. I mean, I don't know which one I'm invented, but they were perfectionists. Um, but I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote I. And, and, and I'm, I know I'm going to disappoint a lot of persons uh, in the community, persons who supported me. But, but trust me that uh, I will do everything that I can to make sure that it won't have a negative impact on your community. The most important thing was the fact that they, they uh, have profit not to sell cold wine. That means we don't have to worry about a guy going there, getting a <coughs> bottle of wine, putting a skirt on it, going around the side of the building drinking it. And, um, but I vote out. Mr. Smeagol? Yeah, I, I have a few comments too. It's interesting because who would know that a 7-Eleven would bring this much controversy um, we we vote on uh, commercial and retail properties all the time, and you know I don't think it's fair to demonize 7-Eleven in this case. Um, you, I heard CVS. Many of the items that are sold in 7-Eleven are also sold in CVS. I think it's a matter of choice when people go into these places. It's like when I go home, I can drive by a McDonald's. I can choose not to go to that McDonald's or, and uh, go home and have fresh fruit, or I could go to McDonald's and have a nice hamburger loaded in calories. I think sometimes it's choice, and sometimes when you put it in people's faces, um, it does, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll go and do it. And um, I think with, you know, the, I made a comment uh, in a previous session about uh, East Beach, and for those that were there or watched the session, what I was referring to is we have, uh, I said Ocean View is the capital of 7-Elevens. If anybody wants to see a 7-Eleven every mile come down the Ocean View, uh, and that if uh, a model like this was presented for the 7-Eleven that's across from East Beach, it's not a bad model. In fact, I hope down the road uh, that if there's a proposal to demolish that 7-Eleven and rebuild it, that they will follow the same plan that has been worked out here. Um, and, you know, one thing that we have to understand here is this is private property. Um, and they, BP, uh, who owns the property, can stay there and it can continue looking that way. Um, and they've made a request to upgrade their property. Um, and we have options to say no on certain things with it. They've come and appealed. That's one of the things that uh, was brought up too. They, even though the planning commission said no, they have the right to appeal and come back before us um, and look at it. We don't always agree with the planning commission. Um, but they are presenting a model here that uh, is, it, it, it seems acceptable and I hope that um, we use this th for other models as you continue with this. I, I want to thank the citizens for coming down. Um, it was nice to hear early on this project. Um, and I want to say thank you to uh, Mamie Johnson for calling me, giving the courtesy to call me, and listen to some explanation that asked me some questions. Um, where I, I see there is some communication breakdown um, here, uh, regardless of who, which side you're on with this. Uh, and I hope that uh, we all learn a lesson from this uh, as council people that we have to be working hard all the time, uh, making sure that people understand what's going on um, and that our neighborhoods are communicating. Um, Councilman Burford's right. We don't just represent our wards. We represent the whole city. Um, and so we have to make sure that everybody's communicating uh, and, and making sure we're making the best decisions that the community has full input in this. 
But looking at the merits of the project, um, it, it's $3 million investment. It's going to bring tax dollars in. Um, and I think that's, that's great for our city. I want to encourage the 7-Eleven executives, since you're here, that you become a partner in Norfolk and that your employees walk over to bowling and educate the students on healthy eating, that they educate the students about when they go and buy uh, a candy bar, that you don't take the wrapper and just throw it on the ground, that we start, instead of being used all the time by national industries for coming in the city, that we ask them to be part of our community and work with us um, and, and be part of our cleanup efforts. I think that's what we need to be doing here. They, they have the right as private property owners to do this, but now we need to say to them, don't just come in and put that there and take our money, but become part of the community, volunteer in our schools, uh, and educate uh, our, our citizens on what healthy eating is. Um, but I vote aye. Ms. Williams. I've had a lot of conversation about the 7-Eleven. Probably as much conversation, maybe not quite as much as the Midtown Office Project, but a lot. Um, I do believe that there was a lack of communication yeah, between um, council members, maybe the Department of Planning and the Civic Leagues. Um, and I'm also a lifelong resident of Norfolk. I remember when BP was Amico and it was the same unappealing Amico as it is the same unappealing BP. Now I just turned 40. So that particular gas station in some form or fashion has been there for quite some time since there were attendants who pumped gas and you didn't pump it yourself. I think that if BP as a corporation was interested in upgrading that facility and they were interested in bringing something to the community, they've had at least 40 years to do so. How the 7-Eleven was able to convince them to go into a partnership and put a store there, um, it, it, it be, it's beyond me, but I'm glad that someone convinced them um, to do something there. Um, as a corporate store and not a franchise store, I look at the other corporate store uh, that's right down the street by Military Circle, which has a clientele that is um, interesting. And um, that store doesn't have the panhandling. That store does not have the loitering. That store has very good security. That store has very good lighting. Um, I expect all of that from this store and then some. I agree with Tommy and Andy on, um, and the young lady that spoke on whole foods and, and healthy foods that I believe there's gonna be a deli in this particular 7-Eleven. There are gonna be some things that are different in this 7-Eleven that you don't find in your traditional 10 by 10 box store. Um, I have friends who live in Stonebridge uh, one of them who's called me two or three times about the 7-Eleven, and we've had extensive conversation, and I respect his opinion very much. Um, I have friends who live in Broad Creek. My sister lives there. And we've also, I have, gotten lots of emails for it, against it. We've heard from all of the associations. I've had folks stop me in Farm Fresh about the 7-Eleven. Um, I'm glad Mr. Riddick said what he said because knowing that it is going to pass and being the last vote, I could say no. But I truly believe that this 7-Eleven is going to be a different kind of 7-Eleven. And 
I intend personally to stay in contact with the 7-Eleven corporate management and the district manager. I've already spoken to them about another 7-Eleven that troubles me greatly in my ward. And um, I just have to vote what is my conscience and take into consideration also the entire picture. And I don't believe that the citizens got the full picture of the 7-Eleven. It is private property, and we can't make people sell it if they don't want to. And if I was BP making the money they make, I wouldn't sell it either. But we can improve it, and we can work with 7-Eleven and include them in our community. If they show an interest in being included, which I'm sure that they will, I'm sure that they will over in the corner there show an interest in being a partner in our community. Um, if they're a partner with us, then we can work with them and make this 7-Eleven the best 7-Eleven in Norfolk. So I will not be a hypocrite. I vote aye. Mr. Wynn? Well, I think everything that needs to be said has been said. It is one thing that that I know that 7-Eleven is making an effort to upgrade stores and to build new stores in Norfolk and just let them know we're certainly going to watch how they operate this. I know there's at least one <coughs> they're looking at over in Ghent and probably looking at in um, Ocean View also. So we're going to hold you to the level of performance that you're hearing that this council wants. Uh, uh, I vote aye. Mr. Frame. Um, <coughs> I want to thank everybody for coming for coming down tonight. Uh, it's been a good discussion. It's been a respectful discussion. It's been informative. I want to thank the council members for taking so much time with this issue as well. We normally do not get quite as involved in these sort of uh, in these matters to this level. I mean, hours and hours of this stuff. So, but thank you, um, Mr. Riddick. Reminded me when he was talking about the 7-Eleven on Hampton Boulevard. It sits in the middle of a very diverse community there. Um, I remember years ago when I supported that, despite the fact that there was some opposition to it, and some of the opposition actually was led by Old Dominion um, because of some of the concerns that were raised here tonight uh, about their concern about the, how the 7-Eleven uh, would be operated in that location. And it turns out right now it's an asset to the community. And I think most people who would go there would understand that and can see that, that this thing can be done well if there is the will to do it. And I think these, and I'm confident that's what's going to happen on this occasion. So. So I vote no anyway. So I'm, I, I vote aye. <laughs> I vote aye. Okay. Thank you very much for coming down. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Are you going to call the rest of them, right? Yes, sir. 8A is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit a retail goods establishment to operate after midnight on property located at 3027 East Virginia Beach Boulevard and 987 Valentine Boulevard. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. 8B is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a gas station sales only on property located at 3027 East Virginia Beach Boulevard and 987 Valentine Boulevard. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? I R H C an ordinance granting a Broad Creek Gateway Overlay Development Certificate to permit the construction of a gas station sales only on property located at 3027 East Virginia Beach Boulevard and 987 Valentine Boulevard. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R9, please. An ordinance granting a special <laughs> exception to permit the operation of a commercial drive through facility on property located at 1113 to 1139 North Military Highway by 7 0 vote planning commission recommends approval. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Is this the C? Oh, okay. All right. I couldn't get in my head where this was. Aye. Absolutely. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Great. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 10. They're, they're, see, they're just closing the Starbucks that's there, yeah. and moving it to the new locations. Mm -hmm. Where the lums used to be. Yeah. Great drive through Starbucks. That's what it <laughs> An ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment on property located at 1083 37th Street by 7 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. 
dispense with the charter requirement for being the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Cotagero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Cole? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R11, please. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an automobile repair facility on property located at 1550 Azalea Garden Road. By 7 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Mr. Murphy, Aldine Murphy is here along with Anthony Sotis to speak if anyone needs to be. I think we're okay, but thank you. Okay. Yeah, we don't. Honorable Mayor and City Council. Yes, sir. My name is Alden D. Murphy, I think and I live at 2400 Early Street. Okay. I've been living there since uh, Thanksgiving 1947. <laughs> Good this building we're talking about, I've owned it for about 40 years. Okay. It's a budget auto truck and marine repair. And budget boat and auto Patrick Gravely, he broke all the agreements, the lease agreement, and it was last Sunday night at 10.30, I moved him out. He got all of his junk mostly. I got a whole lot to clean up. And, uh, but I still like to get it zoned for automobile repair. And over here on, uh, you got uh, A to I agreements here to make. Well, Mr. B. I'm not aware of any opposition to this, so. Sir? I said, I think there's, I mean, I, there's no opposition to this, so. I think well, there's, there's one thing I can't do. Okay. It says, uh, the roof overhang located on the north side of the building shall be removed. That roof, there's plenty of room to park two cars under it. That roof has got four-inch angle iron mortared into the blocks with three-quarter bolts, an eight-inch I-beam on the end with three-inch stanches on it. It's welded in, and uh, it'd almost be impossible to take it down. And if I could get the city council to delete this part, the rest of the stuff I think I can do. Um, well, I'm glad you stood up then. Let's, um, uh, Frank. He should have quit while he was there. I know, you should have, uh, but he, he was. quit while you are here. You brought yeah. something to our attention that we didn't know. Um, Mr. Murphy, we're going to ask the planning director. We might continue this matter for a couple of weeks so we can get this straight. With you, is well, I tell you, I don't know what happened, but uh, Susan Pollock, she started mm -hmm. out with this deal, just like everything was going through fine, and then she told me, I asked her what I had to do. She says you got to hire an engineer, so I went and okay. talked to an engineer, right. and then he uh, gonna charge me about eight nine hundred dollars, so. And he told me about the roof overhangs, so I stopped him. All right, l l let me ask our planning director a question, Mr. Murphy. What, can you just back away from the podium for a second? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> no, Mr. Duke. Yes, sir. Do you know what that issue is all about? Yes, sir. Without removing the roof overhang and the supports for it, the site will not meet parking requirements. Okay. <laughs> which was why this became a condition of the special exception to ensure that it would meet ordinance requirements for the okay. proposed oh. use. So he says he can't remove it, and he doesn't meet the parking requirements with it there. If we continue this thing for a couple weeks, could you? We can continue to work, but it would require more being able to work with, with someone who could, could detail plans to show how this could meet city requirements without removing that fixture. Okay. So we'd be happy to do that. Okay. Mr. Murphy. Just when you if, can't park up automobile under a shelter well um, why don't we find that out for you okay if do you have a lease or something that's been signed that where you've got to occupy this property within the next two or three weeks no sir would it it's would just it, now all I'm doing is cleaning it up We're just would it would it be okay if we took a month to make sure we got it right before we came back here 30 days I guess so I have to if that's what you want to do <coughs> I think it'd be best for you if I got instead of I see Fred out there Warren and right. Portona here right support me see the guys I, I know um Fred like uh four weeks we we'll come back you okay I know Mr. Gallup is uh good it's you know back he understands the council right. back to right. the, okay. I can't get anywhere Miss uh Susan Pollock won't, won't even answer my phone call. I have a talk to me. Well, we're going to try to work with you beginning tomorrow. I don't know what happens. February 28th, Mr. President. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Thank you. We're going to continue the matter to February the 28th, though, yes, right? Thank you. Okay.
Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Aye. See y'all. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Fred. I think they tried to stop me. <laughs> All right. R12. An ordinance authorizing the Director of Finance to credit various accounts of the Department of Utilities in the total amount of $1,071,586.84 so as to re reflect uncollectible balances for fiscal year 2008. Uh, Ellis James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the Council, Mr. City Manager Jones, my name is Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 Ken Lake Place here in the city of Norfolk. If you will permit me, Mr. Mayor, I need to make an observation. I have been coming to this council since 1961. I rarely miss an occasion unless the good Lord uh, chooses for me not to be able to motivate. And I want to tell you that today is one of the most interesting days that I have ever spent in this building. <clears throat> and I especially appreciate the fact that the council members on a previous item took time to thoughtfully express themselves. Now, there, you are not the only ones in the building who have done that today, but in the informal session, there was another council member who did some very, very interesting things and thoughtful digging on a very serious issue. And I am proud to be a person who can come and speak to this council from time to time on matters that are serious and very much on the minds of a lot of citizens. R12 raises, in my view, a serious question. And it is not about our utilities director. She's doing a great job in my view. But I'm wondering if possibly we need to examine closely potential changes in the department's practices as it relates to the buildup of this million dollars. Our fine city manager today was talking about several million dollars that are parked over here responsibly, another million would make it about 10 million. And so I'm right, I'm very concerned about the fact that somehow we don't seem to be able to hone down the amounts of monies that are in this item, R12. And I would hope that uh, we take a real thorough and close look at how it is that we keep winding up with these figures. Now, this is the 2008 right. amount. This is not the current amount as I understand it. And so the question is, how many times do we have to let whoever it is that's responsible for these paying these bills off the hook are there possibly parts of our procedure that could be tightened up that would help us to avoid this kind of write-off? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Ellis. M Mr. Mayor, it's just a quick question um, for uh, Kristen. I, I think we, we talked about this last year. This is an annual thing that we have to do to right. clean up our books. Um, compared to the previous year, did this number grow significantly? Because I remember, I believe it was under a million last year. Do you, do you remember the figure? Okay, what, what would you say attributed to most of this? Is it because of the economy and people moving, foreclosing on properties and, and with those foreclosures, they're not paying their other bills as well? And would you think, do you say that it has? I think that had some effect. 2008 was actually before things got quite as bad as they are now. Starting, yeah. Um, yeah. We, our collection rate is actually very, very good. Um, 
better than most of the water utilities around and we collect more than 99% of our revenue. The $1 million looks so large because it is um, being collected on more than $100 million worth of revenue and that covers uh, water, wastewater, uh, storm water and refuse collection. And it's a little bit higher than the previous year because it reflects the year where we got a new billing system and in um, implementing the new billing system, we needed a time where we ran the two systems simultaneously, and that allowed a few people to get away from us. Great. Thank you for that yeah. explanation. Yeah. That's a great answer, Christine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, I mean, it's for, important. I, it I got really an is. email from a constituent asking why we would approve people not paying their bills, and I think it's important that we understand all parts of it, and I can't explain it um, the same way that you did. So, Andy. Uh, Ms. Lentz. These are these are judgments. We've received judgments. Yes. Uh, who represented the city in these? Uh, the city attorney's office. Right. When it goes to collection after the city attorney receives the judgment, at that point, who then in turn goes through the collection process? Uh, we have city staff that goes through the process, and after city staff is finished, you know, we collect on people's state tax returns, et cetera. Right. After we've done everything we can do, we turn it over to a private collection agency, oh, and they pursue it. Now, let me ask you, if you turn to a private collection or like a law firm to do the collection? It's actually, I don't think it's a law firm. I think it's a, um, a they collection, collection company. They use yeah, a regular so collection, collection agency. agency. They yes. have a percentage of whatever is. Exactly. Right. Lastly, has there been any discussion to sell this debt? Meaning, the agency or to another agency, they've attempted, how much will they give us on the dollar to collect this debt? If we say, if we owe, if there's a million there, is it possible that we approach them and say, and, and they do that. They'll be certain, they'll, it may be 10 cents on the dollar, it could be cents on the dollar, it could be 20 cents on the dollar, that we sell the debt to them and then we have funds that come in. Has that been discussed? We can certainly take a look at that. Can we, sure. can we do yeah, that? Well, it, On a broader scale, that's <coughs> one of those gap closing measures that we're looking at right now in terms of collections. So yes. Are we required to do this by law? Like, are we? Do we have to close out 2008? You're not required to close it out, but the department doesn't have the discretion to do so, uh, and so that it's right now a receivable on the books that is past the statute of limitations, um, and, and so that uh, if, if you didn't close it out, uh, someone would have to read the footnote to understand that this receivable had virtually no prospects of being collected so it's in the nature of housekeeping but you've gotten a judgment that you have you've gotten your judgment and you have taken it and you've docketed it in the circuit court have you not um because you can dock yes. your judgment in the circuit court which makes it good for 20 years yeah. unless you're prohibited it's, by code but even if it's that. collected if it's collected afterwards they can take it back to income it's not yeah, like i it. understand but we do do that pursue it i'm, I'm not Jack. I, I'm not sure. The judgment's worthless if we're not docking them in the circuit court. I can tell you that. Well, sometimes the judgments, I mean, there's a fee for docking it. Yeah, as well, you may, yeah. you know, there's a diminishing return at some point there, so. Yeah, but why don't we look to see if we're docking them? Because that will make the judgment 20 years. This guy goes to refinance. He goes to, go to, he goes to do something at some point in his life. It's going to turn up. Yes. So I would suggest two things to look at. One. Are we docketing the judgments in the circuit court, which make the judgment a 20-year judgment? And look at the cost. It may be cost prohibitive, as, as Paul has said. It is. Uh, two, then let's, and, well, let's see if we can work out an agreement with the city, with the, with the clerk to see if he can come up with something better if we're doing some volume. Or there volume could be docking. a threshold. Maybe there's some way that we can work this out. Maybe we go to the, uh, to, uh, to the General Assembly on that. And then number two, let's see if we can sell the debt and get at least some sense back on the dollar and let somebody else worry about it at the, when we're at this point. Yes. Just, it's just thought. I mean, Thank you. none of it may work. Right. Okay, where were we? Ellis got us off track. Okay, call the vote. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Yes. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, that concludes um, tonight's formal agenda. Thank you all.